Our next member of the Hepsiviride family is the Epstein-Barr virus, or EBV, also known as the Human Hips Virus 4. Right, so this virus causes infectious mononucleosis, or mono, and it's also known as the kissing disease. The genome in this virus is a linear double-stranded DNA, and like other members of the Hepsiviride family, it has an envelope, and the envelope, as I've been saying, is derived from the nuclear envelope. Right. On transmission, this virus is mainly transmitted through saliva. That's why it's called kissing disease. And sometimes it can be uh, transmitted through respiratory secretions. Right. Let's talk about the pathogenesis of this virus. Right. This virus uses the CD21 receptor to cause infection of the B lymphocytes in mucosal epithelium. B is uh, the epithelium of the oropharynx or the cervix, right? So how do you remember this CD21? Because it's important, right? One must be 21 to drink beer in a bar, right? So CD21, B cell. Uh, Epstein-Barr virus, simple. So after infection with this virus, the infected B cells will induce humoral immunity, thus B cells, as well as cellular immunity, thus T cells. So what will happen is that there will be increased concentration of atypical uh, lymphocytes, right? So these atypical lymphocytes are also known as downy cells, right? So they will increase in bloodstream, and these cells are actually CD8 positive cytotoxic T cells and they will be here to fight the infected B lymphocytes. All right. Okay, let's talk about the clinical manifestations. All right. Firstly, this infection is asymptomatic, especially in children. All right. The symptoms typically occur in adolescents and young adults and uh, the symptoms will last for two to four weeks, right? And the main symptoms which I want to talk about is splenomegaly, right? So this splenomegaly occurs in 50% of the cases and it can be accompanied with fever, fatigue, and malaise, right? The other symptom is bilateral cervical lymphadenopathy, right? That's enlargement of the cervical lymph nodes, right? which can be fatal because this enlargement can actually block the upper airway, as you are going to see, right? The other symptom is pharyngitis or tonsillitis. So the tonsils will be reddened, enlarged, and they'll be covered with pus, right? Uh, so this is serious because we can make a mistake and um, we can misdiagnose and say it's actually strep throat yet it's EBV, and the consequences are serious. Okay, I'm going to show you. For now, let me show you the image of this uh, tonsillitis. Here you can see uh, the enlarged and inflamed uh, tonsils, right? And here is another image. You can see them again. Okay, let's move on, right? The other symptom is maculopapillarage, right? Which is similar to measles, right? So in 5% of the cases, this rash is caused by uh, the EBV infection, right? But in general, this rash is associated with um, administration of amino penicillin, right? Like ampicillin or amoxicillin. So that is why I was saying this pharyngitis and tonsillitis can be serious because it can lead us to uh, administration of wrong therapy. Okay, let's move on. Right, so as I said before, uh, on infection of the B cells, this virus can actually immortalize and transform the host B cells, right? So what does this lead to? Lymphomas, right? Okay, so this lead to B-cell lymphoma, and they can be grouped into um, 
three, right? Hodgkin's lymphoma, Beckett's lymphoma, and this one is actually a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, right? And the other uh, cancer is um, nasopharyngeal carcinoma, right? So uh, for Hodgkin's lymphoma, this one we will see red Stenberg cells that look like all's eyes, right? Right. So this is the image showing the the oil's eyes, right? Or oh, these are red Stenberg cells, right? Let's move on. Now on Beckett's lymphoma, endemic Beckett lymphoma uh, occurs mainly in Africa, and it typically affects the jaws, right, uh, and facial bones. Okay, and this is the image showing a person with endemic Beckett's lymphoma. Right, you can see here, and the patient is also uh, like bleeding from the mouth. It's serious. Right, let's move on. And also, uh, there can be sporadic Beckett's lymphoma, right? So, sporadic Beckett's lymphoma actually present with abdominal masses uh, or bone marrow involvement. And they can also be immunodeficiency related Beckett's lymphoma, right? So this will be similar to sporadic Beckett's lymphoma, which occur typically in patients with HIV. And lastly, nasopharyngeal carcinoma is just like that. Okay, let's move on. Now, uh, the other complications, right, include oral hair leukoplakia, right? So this, okay, uh, typically in HIV patients, right? And it looks like this. So you can mistake this to uh, thrush caused by candida. But the difference is this oral hairy leukoplakia cannot be scraped off. It cannot be scraped off uh, uh, like, unlike candida thrush which can be uh, scraped off. Okay, let's move on. As I said before, because of that uh, serious cervical lymphadenopathy, there can be upper airway obstruction, right? Yeah, so due to or, or pharyngeal inflammation and lymphadenopathy, right? Another serious complication is splenic rupture because uh, there will be enlargement of uh, spleen because of proliferation of the T cells there, right? So... Uh, if you are like at a place where there are a lot of people, there is a lot of pressure, this can uh, risk uh, splenic rupture, right? Okay, so um, for diagnosis, I have uh, only two methods which I want to talk about here. And they include monospot test and peripheral smear, right? On monospot test, this test actually detects the heterophile antibodies produced by EBV um, infected B cells, right? So these antibodies are produced by the B cells which are infected with the EBV, right? And we detect this using the RBCs from the horses. And the specificity of this test is actually 100% and sensitivity of 85%, right? Moving on to peripheral smear, right? So this will present with a lymphocytosis, right? And in this lymphocytosis, more than 10% of the cells will be like atypical lymphocytes, also known as downy cells. And remember, these cells, I said, uh, they are mainly uh, uh, CD8 positive cytotoxic cells, right? And they will be here to fight the infected B cells, right? So to conclude this video, let me talk about our treatment, right? But mainly it's symptomatic therapy, right? Firstly, we need to avoid physical activity that may trigger splenic rupture. For example, uh, contact spots, right? So this should be avoided for at least three weeks after the onset of symptoms, right? The other thing we can do is uh, we can give IV fluids, right, if it is necessary. And last but not least, we can give analgesics or antipyretics, for example, acetaminophen, right. But we should 
avoid aspirin because aspirin uh, in this case in ebv infection and other viral infections like influenza if we give aspirin it can cause reyes syndrome right if you don't know reyes syndrome then google it Thank you.